how are you doing today? Today I'm going to show you how you can paint this space flower. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, I'm your Art Sherpa, and today is Space Week, and I'm so excited to be sharing a bunch of fun things during, with you during this live cast event. I have this really great flower that's very nebula looking and I'm going to show you some really cool dry brushing techniques and glazing techniques so you can get really fun space effects and also talk a little bit about great star splatter. On the mic today is my husband John. Hi guys. Because this is a live event he's going to be as we're painting tracking me with the cameras, following me around right up to the palette cam, and also answering questions that you might have as we're painting. There's been two paintings before this, and we've got three more coming up this week. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot happening. So this is the wonderful image we're going to be painting. Of course, there's picture in picture, and after the show, I will be putting up a traceable, because I don't think drawing is the only art skill. I think it's a great art skill, but it's just a skill. And if you're not drawing yet, don't worry about it. I want you to paint. I think that's more important. I've got a 9 by 12 canvas here. We've got some wishes. We'll get to those in a second. And over here, I have today's colors already in their tubes because i got to put them out. I'm going to show you how I black gesso my own canvas and dry it, like what's involved with that today. I've got titanium white, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, phthalo blue, and of course, Quinacridone magenta, or if you've been with us a while, pass them aquatic pink. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't see the bubbles hooked up, so oh. I'm a little bit bummed. <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that. We it's you know what, you know what I'm excited about this morning mm. as I sip coffee. my coffee and get going. <laughs> I uh, was able to put on makeup. That doesn't matter for this painting tutorial, mm -hmm. but it was really exciting for me today because right, right, it's been a couple of days. That's right. So you feel it's it's you know much better, much better, <laughs> much better. We have a couple of wishes we're going to be covering over with our paint and hoping go into the universe. There was a bunch of wishes that came in for families and people who are battling cancer. Mm -hmm. So we're putting just a general for our community strength and healing and the best possible healers and support for the families that are going through cancer. Um, support and love to all the moms and dads whose kids are leaving for school. Mm. I know I'm going through that. Um, all my kids are going to be in school this year yeah. for the first time. And I'm kind of depressed about it. <laughs> Excited and depressed. It's a weird feeling. <laughs> and then also um, strength and love for families just around the world. Lots of love and peace. I'm going to put out my black gesso. So I like black gesso. It's basically exactly like the white gesso, but it has a very high dose of black pigment in it. When I mix my own black gesso, it tends to be gray um, because I'm just basically mixing black paint into white paint making gray because white right. gesso yeah. has a load. Now, I could mix black paint into clear gesso, but at that point, I'm just going to buy black gesso. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to get a nice big wide brush to brush this on. I'm just going to load this up. Gesso is a ground, not a sealant. So what that basically means is is that if this was a if this had chemicals or weird properties in it, they could still leak through the gesso to your paint surface. Right? What gesso does is just give you a nice surface to paint on. I like black gesso the best. It's a really great surface. Mm. Um, you can buy these canvases, though, already done. Black. Pre, yeah, pre-gessoed black. Yeah, at the store and often on sale if you're just like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. My biggest problem when I'm doing these 9 by 12 canvas boards mm -hmm. is that I tend to build up a little gesso around my edges, and then they get me later because they're not dry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I end up with those weird little black streaks all over my hands <laughs> yeah. when we go out to eat at a nice restaurant. So fantastic. <laughs> so I'm just putting this on here. There's a neat thing I'm going to do today to get our star dispersion. I'm not actually going to splatter while this is still wet because the pigment will like uh, seep into my white paint. And we'll gray my star splatter a little bit. So oh. I'm going to actually have to go through the um, drying process where I dry my gesso. Yes, you can hair dry gesso. That's perfectly acceptable. And as you can see, I really only need one coat of this to just cover my canvas completely. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hair dry. John's going to say hi to all you guys. Hi. 
and I am so excited that everybody is showing up in the morning live for Space Week. Let me try this painting. <laughs> So, wow. Hi, guys. It is morning, and it's so good to see you. Wow, we have a full house today. It is morning. And and Cinder and I are, as you can see, just sort of getting used to the, the, the morning show time, but we really are enjoying uh, getting up and seeing everybody like this. So, you, you can bet we're going to keep it up. Um, so, uh, there are a bunch of questions that had come up in here. Uh, if you don't have gesso, can you just put a layer of black paint on? And yes, absolutely. If you uh, if you just have black paint and you want to paint this black, um, you can go ahead and just do that. And the same thing, just dry it again before uh, you uh, you you want to do the the next step, the, so that the paint doesn't uh, you know layer in it because you don't want to work wet on wet. But um, just uh, yes, you with her finger, she's just wiping those edges because that's where she gets. Uh, and someone was uh, uh, asking where she gets her inspiration. Uh, I'll make sure I ask her that. She, I know she gets her inspiration from a lot of uh, a lot of artists. Um, you know, I don't want to speak for her, but uh, uh, I'll have to. They, they were asking where you, you know, where you, where do you get your inspiration? What artists? And I was just like, well, gosh, I know there's a lot of them. I don't want to speak out of turn. Oh, there's so many. Uh, we were just talking about Turner this morning. Oh, yeah, Turner, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a there's a bunch of artists. I think you should have a lot of artists that excite you. Um, I guess uh, right now I would say check out Andy Goldsworthy mm. from Scotland. There's a movie with him about him called Rivers and Tides, and oh, I think yeah. it's one of the coolest things you will ever ever see. That's Modern right. artist. I think is amazing. Yeah. For somebody that works in dirt. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put out, this was what one of my materials. I'm going to put out some fluid white. And the reason I'm going to use fluid white is because it has uh, less body. If you see the titanium white next to it, I can put this out now so you can kind of see the difference. See how this is very thick mm -hmm. right here? And this is kind of like, I don't know, almost the consistency of maybe olive oil. Yeah. You know, so it's self-leveling. So when I go to splatter, it's going to be easy. You could thin this, right, with water. It does give you some more opportunity to have difficulty in your splatter where it's more likely to be like strings of splatter mm -hmm. when you thin it with water. It's really hard to get it to that exact consistency. Um, I have a whole video on how to splatter better, and I talk about a lot of this stuff. And some economy ways that you can get splatter without having to buy, you know, golden fluid. Though I really have to say, I love this junk. Mm -hmm. And it comes in that little bottle, and I just always have some around. So what I do, this is my galaxy brush, mm -hmm. right? So it, this is going to make my small splatter stars from my set. Um, it looks like a toothbrush. It is not a toothbrush. You could, no. if you could not get this, use a very stiff toothbrush. But what I like about this is this has the Sherpa white filament in it, which is going to let me just, it's like the pink, I can just barely pull back the bristles and get an amazing star dispersion, as you can totally see. That's the big thing, is just making sure you have a tool that you can predictably work with. Exactly. Just, you know, the magic is never in the tool, the magic is in you. Um, I'm just excited to have a predictable tool that I can get and replace. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> John has been with me when I have lost my favorite uh, splattering tool and had to find another splattering tool. <laughs> I also have here a double-ended, this is a lot like those nail tools, but it has two ball bearings at the end, and they're going to give me, you know, some stars. So I'm going to come up here and add a couple stars, just some different dispersions that I might have. I just dip the ball bearing, as you can see, in there. I'm going to put it around here in the upper right corner. I might add some more once I get my flower in. I just wanted to make sure that as I'm going, I have some nice, defined, round stars, too, before I put in my superstars. What you always want in your space is layering. Because in space paintings, depth is everything. Mm -hmm. Which is why I splatter at least one splatter. And if you've painted a lot of my space paintings, you might have noticed I do this. Before I start painting, and then might hit it again with a little splatter after because I'm creating a depth of stars. Mm. That's why I do what I do. But you could do how you do. I was saying that's why I do what I do. I'm going to dry this again. Oh. 
and hand you <laughs> over to John, which is his super favorite thing, <laughs> where he's going to say hi to everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that was a uh, good I hope I wish you to answer the question for you over inspiration. So I will say thank you again for everyone coming out. And um, if you guys will post up your paintings on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then just tag it back to us, you know, the Art Sherpa, and uh, we, we'd love to see those. I love seeing all of your paintings. I love to see all of this stuff. And uh, yes, this is space layers. The space space needs layers. So she has to uh, to dry it. And and the reason why she's drying the the stars is that as she starts to use brush strokes and do stuff next, any of those little white dots will pull into the brush stroke that she's going to make next. So it's, uh, it's important that she makes sure that, they, that she dries them really good so that especially any of the big uh, drips of paint get, uh, get fully dry so that when she's you know, painting, they don't pull. Uh, and this is uh, on a scale of our one to three difficult, uh, difficulty. This is a one hoot painting, so it should be pretty easy for anyone to take on. You know, there's some interesting techniques that she uses, like with a paintbrush, with a with the uh, toothbrush and the and the dotting tool. But they were just saying this is probably a one hoot painting. There oh were... yeah, totally one hoot, and an easy one hoot. Yeah, this is the only an thing. Easy one hoot, as long as you're relaxed with yourself, mm -hmm. right? You know, that's going to be the big thing on this is just being really chill and relaxed with yourself. I'm going to put out my paint colors. Oh, yeah. Which ones are you putting out? I'm going to put out some quinacridone magenta, or as John used to say, some aquatic paint. I, could, I couldn't say quinacridone. Some cad yellow medium. Much less spell it. If you only had Indian yellow from the last few days, that would be fine, too. <laughs> <laughs> some phthalo blue. There it is. I don't actually need that much. I always put out more paint than I need. And the reason being is so that you guys can see it. You could actually, like, when I'm painting on my own, I put out about that much. So I put out a lot more so for the shows than you need to put out for your palette. That helps them, you know, them see you mix paint and stuff, right? Yeah, it just helps you see it. And, you know, it's good for the show. But that isn't necessarily what you have to do at home. You could be on your polystyrene plate just metering out small bits of, yeah. of paint. Look at the paint hands already. You should show <laughs> me your paint hands on social media. All right. Let's find a bright that we feel like painting with today. I'll get the picture and picture back. There it is. Get the picture and picture back. I'm going to get, I think I'm going to get a black pearl. Okay. So this is a number four black pearl. And in what I'm about to do, I'm not actually going to get the brush wet beforehand because I'm going to be doing a lot of dry brushing. Now later I might be using some glaze and I guess I could put some of this out here. This is acrylic glazing liquid gloss. This is used to extend and slow down the drying time of the paint. Unlike retarder which just slows the drying time, I can use small mixtures of paint into this and it will still dry. Whereas a retarder will not. Hmm. You, have, you have an exact mixture. I think it's like you can't use more than 30% retarder in the mixture. So I'm going to start out with a little of my yellow, I think. Every space flower is a little different every time I do these. I'm going to add a smidge of white to it. I don't want a whole lot of paint on my brush, as you can see. And I'm going to come up here. If you imagine that the canvas is divided into fours, kind of in the upper right four square. I'm going to come right here to this point in canvas. I'm going to make a little mark. That's going to be the base of my flower. And I'm going to just lightly, this is a very expressive free form kind of painting. I don't sketch a lot in ahead of time. Very lightly with my brush, sweep up, sweep down, and curve around. You see that almost little S curve there? And I'm going to come here and I'm going to go up, 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 sweep down and up. So I'm going to come over towards the left, back to the right, sweeping down. Switching my brush to the ends of its bristles, I'm going to sweep up. Isn't that interesting? Maybe do another little sweep. Look at this, I go up. See, this is like calligraphy. So I'm using this brush like a calligraphy pen. And by allowing the angle to thicken and thin my line, 
I can create these cool thin effects. All right, I'm going to put a little pink on my brush and get a little white and more pink. I like quinacridone because it's a bit transparent as it is. And maybe this time I'm going to I'm going to make a little petal that comes out. I'll thicken it here. What I'm doing is I'm creating little gas clouds. And I'm going to just lightly dry brush. Look how little I'm trying to cover the whole canvas, right? I'm not trying to do that at all. Come here lightly on my pink. Just dusting, see? And the pink and the yellow is on my brush, so they're mixing together. If I feel like I need some more flower out this way, I can come with the pink and do that. And this is how I create that sort of gaseous cloud effect, is I'm allowing a lot of the canvas underneath to show through. I'm dry brushing very lightly. If you are using craft paints, because it's soft body paint, I'm going to definitely say less is more. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit with my white here, my soft body white, what I mean. I'm going to rinse out my brush and dry it off. Craft paints are much harder to dry brush with because they have a lot more fluidity in them. So I have to barely put any on the brush. And even so, it's much harder to dry brush. Can you see? Oh, yeah. So if you're having difficulty in the dry brush, it's because you're not using heavy body paints. And just know that you've got to be extra light, extra airy. Mm. Nothing wrong with it. Just saying. <laughs> All right. Going to get a little more of my yellow on here. And I'm going to keep building up my flower. I'm going to come on the edge of my brush and curl around. Making a nice darker yellow space here. And then I'm going to come right here and make a sort of little petal shape. So I go up down and then it curves to the edge of my brush and that's how I'm getting those very very gorgeous different shapes. Now I can come and add some glaze to my paint, right? Even a little white which is pretty pigmented but if I glaze it it won't be. Now, and the glaze is going to do a different effect where it makes the paint a little more transparent so I can fill in this area here. See that there? Yeah. So Laura was asking if you don't have uh, a heavy body paint, is there something you can mix with like your craft paint or your fluid paint to make it thicker? Um, yeah. That's what all the gels and mediums are at the craft store. So a heavy body gel, you could put a little of your pigment in a heavy body gel. Oh, yeah. um, the reason they, that paint companies make those gels is entirely so say you have one type of paint you prefer to use. You prefer to use like uh, deco artist craft paints. That's like your favorite. But you need to do a palette knife painting for some reason. And you don't want to go buy a bunch of heavy body paint to do this one painting. You go get the heavy body gel, modify the paint you love to do the thing you want for just that one time. Yeah. One product. That's why they do it. It's actually not a whole big trick where they're trying to get you to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Those are actually really cool. Yeah. You know, cool effects. Just cool effects. I'm going to come get a little of my white dry brushed on. Hopefully got enough water out of my brush. I'm going to come here and I'm going to brush some like of this white through here. Let's get some, uh, maybe some yellow. This is fun for me to do in pink on the brush. Almost like I'm loading a one stroke brush. See how some of it's yellow and some of it's pink? Yeah. Half and half. That's kind of a fun thing. And I'm going to give myself some end petals here to think about. And again, I'm just curving that around. There we go. I feel like that's a pretty interesting yeah. gaseous body, right? Maybe I want to have a little pink here. I'll loop it around like that. And then around the outside edge. So that's a that's a fun base that I've got on this flower. You could be more inspired by a rose. You could be more inspired by a different type of flower. And that would be okay. 
I'm going to put down here this sort of really gorgeous gaseous bank that mm -hmm. we have. And I think this is fun because it's got some phthalo turquoise, which is basically phthalo green and phthalo blue together. Mm -hmm. One of my very favorite mixtures. You can just buy a tube of this if you don't want to mix it, but I really love mixing it. And let's start down here with this dark, dark color. I'm going to come here and just go up and down and up. Yeah. Now, if I want it to start to show, I'm going to have to add a little white, but a smidge of white to my brush. Then let's, I'm going to put some here and curve that around. So you're just creating some. Yeah. Just some light little stories. Let's get a little green and a little yellow. So this is sort of the, the spacious story of the ground. Well, this is the nebula, right? It looks like a flower, but this is this. You know, this is a bit of space a la Valerian. <laughs> 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 I mean, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm going to come up underneath here with this more green color. And as you can see, just using the calligraphy of the brush to tell that story. Maybe there's a little more yellow on here and some white. And the really nice thing I'm about I'm going to just lightly brush that here. One of the really nice things about this painting is, you know, there's all it, this this really it challenges your brushwork. So It's just all about your brushwork. This is a dry brushing painting. At the beginning one was like, we going to work on some dry brushing. I was totally serious. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's like uh, there's a hunt, you know, there's all these different ways that you could use you know, mediums or gels or things to get similar effects. But if this is the great thing about this is that you just really get to practice a lot of dry brushing. So this this stroke is I come down and I just gonna stroke up and I'm gonna maybe dry brush here and then I might get a little glaze and a little yellow and a little more glaze. And then I'm gonna come here and just blend that down. And you can see the difference between the glazed areas Yeah, the and the other types of areas. Now I'm going to do the little wing shape here. And I think for the little wing shape here, I'm going to want a little bristle brush. Uh, we'll get one of my little clouds. Like, no, wait, here's one. Nice little Cambridge. And then I'll get one of my clouds. So I'm going to get a little of my blue on here and some glaze. This is a number six Cambridge. This is a bristle. You could use my clouding brush here. I'm going to do some of this with this and some with my clowning so you can see both. And I'm going to come up and make this little butterfly wing shape here. So this is about the glaze. And I'm just wiggling my brush back and forth on the corner. Making this fun shape, right? Fun shape, tapering it down here. I'm leaving this nice area for a good star. Let's come in and uh, make a nice one here. All right, you're fun. Um, let me show you how you could do it with, I'm gonna just use this number six. I'm gonna get a little glaze on here and a little of my magenta and some white. Just come along here, tell some of the story, maybe on this upper edge here, just back and forth, very light, very open. The trick is always don't overwork for this type of piece. Wipe a little bit of this off, get some just pure magenta, and come to the back end of this. Right. 
and rinse that out. I think some turquoise in here would be nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get my phthalo turquoise. I'm going to load up a little of my phthalo turquoise onto the brush. Maybe a little more too. There we go. Get the glaze on there. Just lightly working it. Just, you know, have fun with what you have. Don't be all stressed out. It's morning. You got you got sucked into the into the painting effect where you started to you started to drift oh, did away I? as you I'm were just talking. wiggling the you're brush. You're just into the painting now. I, I am? see you. I see you going, you're just like, what brush am I gonna use now? What brush are you using now? I am using a number six Cambridge again. I just want to show you the different types of brushes because I don't want everyone to get wrapped up in one kind of brush, one kind of way. Yeah, there's lots of different ways of doing it. But you I also but are the magic. I'm gonna just this is dry. I'm gonna come up here. I'm just Just keeping it light, keeping it even. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back <laughs> to my original brush just to throw you all off. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get a little of my yellow and my green. And you can see why I said I put out way more paint than I need probably at this point. You're like, oh, yeah, it's way more than you need. And I also think that this is a really good point to demonstrate is that there's not just one brush for anything. That's my point. You just I mean, because she grabs brushes for everything all the time, but they all have their uses. So, so I'm just very lightly bringing my stem down. I'm just letting it wander. I'm gonna cross in front of my nebula here, and then I think I'm gonna make a neat little leaf. I'm gonna go up and down and up, up and down and up. See that fun little leaf? Mm-hmm. This one could be a little more yellow. I'm going to come up off this side, so I'm going to go up, down, wiggle back, and over. All right. So curving up, down, wiggle back, and over. Uh, it did do all that. It did. Is that is that good? <laughs> it is. I was, just, I was like, I'm going to zoom in and see it. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and just tip the edge of this leaf with that dark. Oh, yeah. Maybe the top of this leaf with the blue. Creates a space shadow. It does. Well, and also you would just have some of those, wouldn't you? Just some different colors and some different events. Let's get a little white on our brush. Right, a little white. And I think I want to bring a little, a little kind of galactic leaf over here. Up and over. See how I just wiggle these? Wiggle down, wiggle up, wiggle down, wiggle up, and off. And again, this is a really great for, for practicing your brush strokes, just for this, because you can see how much you, you turn and use them. Exactly. I'm using white now, and look, if I let it fold, look what it does with the stroke. I love that. It's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Gonna get some green. Just loading it right on my brush and some yellow. I'll go ahead and let it tip on the corner with some white. And I'm going to make maybe a little leaf base to this flower. See? Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. These are the little, little base petals that you can have. If you can look for a space that you need any of these colors, it's a good time to put them if you need them. All right. So once I have that basic, basic kind of space, isn't this cool? It's very cool, Fly. <laughs> Rinse your brush out and dry it really, really, really well. Oh, you know what I see? What do you see? I see a spot where I need something. Mm -hmm. I always look for spots where you need something. I'm mixing some of my phthalo turquoise. And right here, I'm going to do a really cool thing. I'm going to go stroke, 
stroke, stroke. Oh. Just feel like that was necessary, and you've now been kidnapped into my family. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, we're going to add the specular starry lights? Uh, no, we have to add a leaf going oh. over the front, but first we have to put in some white detail. I got to work excited. I like the starry part. I know you do. I know you do. I'm going to get a small bright. This is a number four. And I'm going to get a little bit of white on here, just white, dry brushed. And I'm going to come right here and add that little bit of gas to the star. Just a little bit of this gas to the star. I think these are both fours. <laughs> What's going on? What it is? You, you guys want to know what all, happened? I washed all my brushes. They're all in the kitchen being in the brush spa. Huh? <laughs> they're all in the brush spa. So everybody's in the brush spa right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got my number four, the first one I was using. And I'm going to just stroke a little stroke here. I'm just going to add some def defining lines. Now, Let's come here and add a little bit of a white. And maybe... A little bit. See how on the corner of my brush, I went down, up, down. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to remember that what I have here still has to feel like, it has to feel like a flower, but it also has to feel like a nebula. I'm going to put a little flip there. Now, Taro is asking, can you substitute glaze for something else if you don't have glazing medium? Um, do you have like gloss medium and varnish? They're not, it's, you can, it's really best to use the mediums. I'm, I'm never actually messing with you guys. There is stuff that you can do, but every time, so here's what it is. G the glazing gloss medium does this really specific thing, mm -hmm. right? And if I were, say, out on a trip and all I had was gloss medium and varnish, I could totally kind of, like, get a transparent effect. But it wouldn't slow down the drying time of my paint, and it would get sticky really fast. So I'd really have to understand that product on how I could mimic that effect with that product. And so what I would say is, if you're really confident in mimicking other effects, you can use varnish, you can use any transparent medium to create a transparent effect, but you really have to understand each product. Right. Does that make sense? It totally does. Okay. So now, so the answer is never definitively no, but it's like, but be careful. I'm going to make <laughs> some little flower stamens in here. I'm going to make a little line on the edge of my brush. It's always like the adventurer's journey. And I'm going to put up to the top. See how that becomes kind of like a little flower? Mm -hmm. I think that's fun. I think it's fun. I you like might em. not think it's fun, but I think it's fun. I'm going to load up my brush with some yellow. It's okay if it picks up some green next to it. And I'm going to make my big leaf. Ooh. This big leaf crosses in front of everything. It's okay if I get some green and add some of that to that. And then I'm going to rinse out and finish this particular leaf out with some white. I'm going to really rinse it off, wipe it off, reload with some white. Come along the outside. There we go. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Gaseous awesomeness. Yes. Yes, it is. Once you have all this in, guess what you get to do? What's that? Stars. Oh, I love the stars. Stars. So you put out some stars with your dotting tool, right? And you may want to put some more stars out as you're looking for the exact right spot to put your twinkles. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get my dotting tool. And I know that I need a twinkle right here. So I'm going to get the big side of my dotting tool. By the way, if you don't have a dotting tool, back of your brush. Oh, yeah. Perfectly acceptable. Sometimes it gets mocked by other artists, but I'm telling you, it's perfectly <laughs> acceptable to use the back of your brush. Anything that gets the job done is acceptable. So I'm going to put that dot right there. All right. Now I'm going to get a very small brush, which hopefully I can find one. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is a number two bright. And I'm going to get some of my quinacridone. If you need some glaze, definitely get some on there. 
And I'm going to brush in a circle around the star this sort of color. I don't want to touch the little dot. Because it's wet. Because it's wet. But I want to start put, putting this color of radiation around. Now I'm going to add just a smidge of white to my brush and just come around very lightly. These are the, the prototypes for the Sherpa whites that are coming out, but you can just use any number two bright you have. <laughs> because all of her other number twos are dirty. All are dirt. So. Well, being keen. You would almost assume I'm not a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding some more white to this. Some of it, not all of it. I'm just trying to create that sense of light that's coming around it. And you can even go back. I just wiped off my brush and I'm going back into my quinacridone. And then cr see how I'm creating that depth of glow? Just taking this time layering up the layers makes a huge difference. Now that, that is a nice little glow on the star and I love it. I'm going to rinse this out. I need to put another glow right here. So I'm going to get my dotting tool. Dotting tool. Like You'll notice that I like to swirl it around and really load up the ball. Again, back of the brush, okay. I love this, but we'll just, oh, it gives don't you not paint because you don't have something. Just flip your brush around. And the reason Use you your finger when you need to. Yeah. I was gonna say, the reason you like that one is because it makes a consistent round dot. Yes. And that's what that little ball bearing thingy does. Consistently a perfect little round dot. So I'm taking my white again this time. This time I'm starting with my white because I'm using yellow in this star. And yellow is such a transparent color that you just won't even see it over the black. And I'm just, as you can see, just dry brushing. So dry brushing is all about not a lot of water on your brush. Mm -hmm. Letting the brush skip over the canvas weave. And just dusting around, isn't it? And I'm just radiating that around. I'm letting some areas be thicker, some areas be lighter. That's creating some nice atmospheric effect. Rinsing out my brush. Because I want some really pigmented yellow. I'm going to load up some yellow on my brush. And just dust it around. Look at yeah. that. Now that star is glowing kind of yellow, isn't it? Awesome sauce. Oh, so cool. So cool. I have some small glows that are happening here. So this time I'm going to get my small dot. And I'm going to make a dot here. A dot here. A dot here. And a dot here. This is also a good time to hand dot out some space stars where you're not having glow stars just to make sure that you have what you're really looking for is in a good star pattern on a good galaxy you want randomness but you also want some of these stars to be bigger and some to be smaller. And it's really about all of that. I'm going to wipe off my brush here. Get my small brush. Make sure it has no water. Get a dusting of my white paint. And come around these small twinkles with just a small amount of glow. See? Mm -hmm. This guy can have a little bit. I'll just come on the corner of my brush. Just a little bit. He's got a little bit of glow. He doesn't have, he's very far away. Actually, he's super glowy, but you can't see. <laughs> it's a faint glow. Because he's so far away. But he's the glowiest of all the stars. We just don't know it from this distance. Everything in space is about distance. And I'll glow this guy up. A little halo there. All right. So now I, I suspect you're going to have to dry these soon. Glow and we've had we've had like over 300 Sherpazoids out here just oh, waiting no, really? for you. Oh yeah. 
They were, they were. Oh, give me a beat. Oh, Bubble me, baby. Let's celebrate that we're together this morning. Yeah, because it's like, it's early in the morning, too. And we have. This counts as cardio. Does it? I'm saying it does. I love all the people who do who do their, their cardio exercises with us. They were telling us about it. And it's like, getting one and two and one and two and do the exercises. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming and joining us. Wait, this we, is funny. We always get like 300 people in here. We like to celebrate that we're Sherpa. We've been Sherpa for a while today, but you just... Curl those brushes! <laughs> So if you're at home and you can't get up and dance with us, do make sure that you're wiggling your fingers and wiggling your toes because it's it's important for everybody to be here it to celebrate with more us. More bubbles. So thank you guys for coming. We love you guys. And, everything uh, is better with bubbles. Everything is better with bubbles. Instead bubble of bombs, music. let's let's just drop bubbles. Drop bubbles. I bet it just calms everybody the heck down. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right, my, I'm me... going to put a dot right here in the middle of my flower. Oh, i got to get up around the flower. You're up there. Oh, okay, there it is. Dot right here. There it is. Very important dot. That's a centralized dot. It's a central dot. I'm going to load up this teeny tiny brush. Use whatever teeny tiny brush you can dry brush with. And I'm going to make this glow. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I don't know if it's fun. Fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for y'all. Now, so Tishi was asking. Getting some uh, yellow and adding it. Yeah? If, if, you, if your brush drops little hairs on the canvas, is there any way to get them out? Okay, so here's the deal with brushes that drop hairs. Well, how do you, how do you get the hairs out of the canvas? Oh, out of the canvas? Um, two cents would be tweezers and then try to repair that. If it's dry, it's now part of forensic reality. If you it's still wet, you can take tweezers and very carefully pick them out. Sometimes I'm like really lazy and I try to brush them out, but it always creates some damage that I've got to repair. Yeah. Like so, don't do as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely um, tweezer it out unless yeah. you're super confident on your repair skills. And the thing that you can do to stop that is um, take your brushes and wash them vigorously when they're new, mm -hmm. and get as many of the loose hairs out as you can. If that doesn't work, if after that first vigorous washing, you're losing tons of hairs, like if in three paintings you lost a hair, that brush is fine. If every painting you were losing a hair, that brush is not fine, and I would give my resources elsewhere. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, they can, you know, the, the natural uh, bristle brushes are. We'll lose a few. Yeah. And they're, we'll they're, lose a few, but y you should be able to uh, wash them out. Yeah, after you wash it, especially like on a synthetic brush, if you yeah, wash your brush out, yeah, they're glued in there. If they're coming out, they should they're not supposed to. Yeah. All right. I'm adding another layer of white. I'll come back with my powerful radial spokes in a minute. Mm. Um, I think I'm gonna put a focal star right here. Kind of in this restful space even though it's got some friends, and then I'll create another little star right there. Yeah. So this one's going to be blue. These are a blue star like the Seven Sisters. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, the I did Pleiades. Some... Huh? The Pleiades. See? I like to... That's how I flirt with John as I say <laughs> space things. This whole week is just about, like, totally tickling John because space art is his favorite art. Yeah, I do. I love space art. It's just his favorite, favorite, favorite. So hopefully it's your favorite too. <laughs> well, it was nice. We got to, you know, we got to all go watch the eclipse yesterday. That was nice. We went out and saw that, and we saw how the light changed, and we got to see the camera obscuro through the trees. It's all true. We did have fun. All right, I'm gonna put some blue here. Blue, blue, blue. I know I'm marching along. We're painting this morning. Oh, this We're is an interesting our art question. In. So Cynthia was asking, Hi, Cynthia. When painting a nebula-style painting, do you concern yourself with direction of lighting and shading? <sighs> um, okay, so sometimes, yes, in this particular piece, I really didn't have to, but sometimes you do. If you have very bright stars that are in your nebula, they will impact how the gas cloud is lit up. So. But a lot of how we see nebulas is in the processing from the space photography. Yeah. Much. So and we're seeing other things besides light sources. 
So what I would have to say is that Cinnamon has been very, very patient with me over the years and has sat through talking about how <laughs> gaseous clouds are, are lit within space. So I think that there's just some couple knowledge that has seeped in there where it's like, you know, you talk about that there is a star forming in a gaseous cloud in space and how does that light and create the effects that we see here on Earth. Yep. So. I'm adding some white to my brush, but I haven't rinsed it. <laughs> and I'm just dusting. You can see that creates a lighter glow of blue around the star. See how that happened? But these were abstract painterly paintings. These are abstract painterly paintings. And so in this, where I say it's lit, is where it's lit. In this painting, what I say is true, is true. So I don't have, in my first painting, I had a lot of open space here, and mm -hmm. I don't have some, so I'll be layering my glow over things. I'm going to take my smaller star ball and put one here. I'm kind of actually happy with that star ball, yeah. but I might put one right there. I'll put one here. Now, you're just using these. And I'm going to maybe drop one here. You're using these stars to help create balance against the, the against flower. Against the flower. I'm balancing my flower. These are all blue stars, too. They're a blue star. Blue stars. In the sky. In the sky. Dry brushing around. Guess what color? White! And just see, I'm just keeping that light. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come here and I'll do this one right here. And that's your number two again? This is this number two bright I have. This is a number two bright. And I can layer right over the flower. Hmm. I'm going to come get some blue. Some blue. And just come around over that. And then I can go right into the white. And then just add this highlight. But not a whole lot. And I think that is all the glow that we have to do. And now we just have to get the little radial sparkles in. Which is like the best part. Oh. The best part is the sparkles. Who loves a sparkle? Everybody here loves Everybody the sparkles. Everybody loves a sparkle. So what I'll say, this, the trick for my sparkles, I'm going to put out fresh soft body paint. You don't want to try to get thin, fine lines with gummy paint. I'm going to get a small detail brush. This is a number two bright. But as you can see, it's got a very fine edge. So I'm going to be able to get like a razor line with it. And I'm going to come and turn this on the side. And do my best to have a steady hand as I put out some radial lines. Now what I will do is I will try to work. I'm going to flip my canvas to be where I can comfortably do things. Because otherwise my stuff will be all jacked up. Just saying. Been here before. And I got to get these first guys in. And so whenever you're working canvas, you don't make yourself uncomfortable for the canvas. You make the canvas fit your physical situation. Right? That's always the trick. That's what you always, always want to do. Right. Now I'm going to come here and hopefully I got these as straight as I could. I might have to straighten some out. Right. Now I'm going to do the horizontal ones, hopefully. Now even these have you, you, you're the, the, the sparkles you, you put in, they all come from... The photography. The photography, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all part of the... Now generally you only see four angle four little little yeah oh little no stars. i just sparkled up my she, sky because it's my universe yeah, she's and added we all just more. live in it 
you sparkle as many of your stars as you want. You shine. But it's what, what I find interesting about it is, is that... Now I'm going to hit diagonals everywhere. You know, you use these real things to influence the my emotional... Imagine. Yeah, my imagination. Yeah. I use the real stuff to be like, well, how can I be imaginative? That's and we've been married a long time, so John now doesn't interject science as much into my creative process. <laughs> I'm going to do more radials here on this one. It's like you They're don't just have radiating out several lines. This one's super sparkly. Super sparkly. <laughs> it's so sparkly. And I might even take some strong lines out this far. Look at that. It's, that's how sparkly it is. It's saying, look at me. It is. It's just so into itself. It's like, I'm so pretty. Just going around where it needs to be. I'm going to flip my canvas over. Again, making things easy for myself. Some people, like surgeons, are blessed with, you know, different steadinesses of hands. Um, you may have a shaky hand. It is okay to skip the sparkle step. It is not where the whole painting hangs. It's just something that makes me happy. Also using a bridge? A bridge, resting your hand, um, paint pens. Oh, yeah, paint pens. This is pens. an excellent time for paint pen if you have one. And that is all it takes to make a space flower. <laughs> I'm so pretty. <laughs> now, that's pretty I'm awesome. Sign my you got to sign it? Yes, I am. I'm going to take all the water out of my brush and I'm going to load up some white on this little bright. And I'm going to come down here and see if I can't do sort of like a nebula style s sign. So it feels a little like a nebula. There we go. I like it to be part of the painting. Oh, I hope that was fun for everybody. That was. Man, we've had we had quite a crowd. We've had really? over 300 people here. We've been Sherpa. We've been having a good time. Lots of people are enjoying this. Colleen was saying that she really enjoys being able to wake up and have and see you first thing in the morning and then be able to have this, you know, even when she you know, she she was able to make it today, but when she's not able to make it, then that's the first thing in the morning that she's able to see. So they appreciate it, and they love I'm seeing so you. We love yeah. seeing you guys. I'm hoping this space week is kind of a fun thing. We have sort of a crazy little journey that we like to do every once in a while. We've been like into theming up a week. We had so much fun for Shark Week. We now have Space Week. Southwest Week is coming up. There's 13 days of Halloween, so we love creating a whole series of things. Um, definitely check the info cards. Check for all the other Space Week paintings. You know we're going to be back tomorrow. Yeah, and our, check the website for the calendar because we got a, we're got we posting up all of our events and things that are oh, coming yeah. up. Oh, yeah, more they're, more they're organized on. into collections. If ever you want to find the collection, we have the collections up mm -hmm. on the website. And, of course, you can upload all your artwork for free to the website. It's just something that we have for you guys. And chat continues if you need to keep visiting with your friends. Yeah, we'll Listen. try to jump over there this morning. And chat for a little bit. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, we could meet you guys at the chat room. Yeah. All right. So be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really, really soon. Bye bye.